Isabel, do you want to introduce yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Isabel Clare and I'm running to be a community and welfare officer. I'm currently a disabled students officer. Um, I study international relations and I'm on a community, I'm the, uh, sorry, no, I'm a community yeah. member um, on the Women's Network panel. Okay, and what made you run for CNW this year? Um, oh, lots of things. I really enjoyed my work in the union uh, this year as a disabled students officer. Really, really mm -hmm. loved like. Uh, lobbying for change for students and it's like it's one of the most rewarding mm. things actually when you get a success and um, but I've really struggled as well with time management with trying to do that and my degree and yeah, I, sure. I guess I really just want to take a year and really concentrate on student issues um, I have really good working relationships with people in the school as well mm. so I know I could like really make a difference um, I'm really passionate about liberation in particular but also about the cost of living um, and like making a more inclusive atmosphere for everyone yeah. including the AU because I feel like we're often a bit divided and yeah. it would just be nice if we could all come together and celebrate everyone so on the on the liberation front obviously you're running Jasmine is running for another position. Rayhan, yeah. who's been really, really involved in liberation over the years. Do you think this is a year where there's a real breakthrough for liberation, just in terms of the people that are running and the fact that it's so high up on the agenda in the elections? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it does. It has really been put on the, the agenda this year, both through the work of the other um, liberation officers. Mm. And, and I think, yeah, we've got a really, really strong race in terms of representing mm. um, lots of different um, liberations. We haven't got as many disabled students as I would like to see, sure. um, or as many LGBT plus students mm. up there. Um, who are out, um, who would, who, as I'd like to see, um, and I think that's something we really need to work on, like engaging those groups. Um, but otherwise, you know, I definitely think it's a really great step forward from having a, you know, usually like white British yeah. um, uh, representatives. So yeah. And what have you achieved this year as disabled students officer? Um, so I've delivered on all of my six manifesto points, which is uh, has been great. Um, I've also um, gotten, uh, I've got Paul Kelly to agree that there will be no laptop bans in any lectures or classes anymore. Um, I've worked um, with the estates team on ensuring that the new building will be accessible, which you won't see for another three years, but it, the work has been done. Um, I've worked um, on in implementing a new sexual harassment procedure with an inclusion policy task force and creating an online um, harassment procedure, harassment for, for any uh, various characteristic, um, uh, so that will be much more accessible to people. Um, I've worked with the counselling service to ensure that um, next, well, we, we're hoping it'll be released soon, um, but we know there's like £5 million pounds that the school's going to put into um, uh, student services, and we're really, really, we're pretty sure that some of, a lot of that's going to go to counselling and disability and wellbeing service, so that should be really, really great. Um, so, if you have one priority next year, one thing you really want to achieve, what would that be? I think it would just make, make everyone feel like they're really part of a community that really cares mm. about them. I think we're just so divided so often um, as a student body yeah. and I think you know you get, see other universities all coming out and really cheering um, at yeah. LSE and supporting each other and I just think you know we have so many amazing students and really amazing societies mm. and clubs um, and activists and all sorts that we really need to like just get together and, and, and um, just you know feel like we're all really part of something and I guess yeah that would be what I'd want to achieve. And mental health is obviously a major issue um, yeah. at LSE and mental health support services. Yeah definitely. Um, I was wondering what concrete steps you'd like to see yeah. taken to improve that and how you're going to ensure that those steps are delivered. Yeah, sure. No, it's definitely, it's a huge issue. It's something I've been working on all year as a disabled mm. students officer. Um, so I put out videos, I put on like uh, de-stress sessions created. Um, uh, you can find it online, but a, um, a document that has everywhere all of the different mm. uh, places you can go for support. I think um, what I'd really like to see from the school um, is putting more investment into the counselling service to yeah. getting rid of the six session limit. That's, that's just an arbitrary number of sessions. Mm. It's ridiculous. Um, um, to getting appointments much faster, much sooner. I think that would be excellent. I think as well to really, um, I I'd, I'd want the peer support to be integrated into the liberation groups because often um, yeah. people, you know, people in those particular groups often have mental health problems. Um, because of the oppression they're facing, I think it would be really a great way to kind of get uh, them included in it, I think. Um, I'd, I'd also like to see more promotion of the other services around um, uh, London that students can use because often you don't want to um, integrate your school mm. with your mental health and that's perfectly justified if you don't want to do that but we have some incredible services in London like there's the, um, I'm never sure how to pronounce this but it's spelled I-E-S-O Camden Online Talking Therapy which is available mm. to all of our students for free online mm. through the NHS which is incredible or there's Mind as a mental health organisation um, so I'd want to see more promotion of that as well. Um, and in terms of other sabbatical officers you'd mm. like to be working with, 
Um, for next year, who are you hoping that you'll, if you get elected, that you'll be working on the sabbatical positions? Ah, uh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> that's great. I mean, um, obviously, Josmina for education. Yeah. That's just that's that's not even um, a mm. question. I think you know I've made a, a real point this year and uh, under my campaign of not being divisive and of wanting to unite yeah. the entire community. Um, and so while I do have my personal preferences, I really want to make sure that next year, if I was elected, I'd be able to work with any candidate um, and create an inclusive um, community. So, yeah, um, yeah and, and I honestly think that we have some really amazing, we have lots of really amazing mm. people running in the races and they'd, they'd all do a great job. So I hope that's, that's an acceptable answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> One of the, uh, the more controversial decisions taken by Sabs over the last two years, yeah. um, well, actually both of the decisions relate to the rugby club. Okay. Obviously, the initial decision to ban them, and then the yes. restrictions put on them when they're re reformed. Um, firstly, what was your opinion on the decision to ban them? Mm -hmm. And secondly, what would be your position going forward on um, the restrictions that have been placed on them? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess firstly, my decision is I think um, no. I, I if I was a special officer then, I would have supported Nona. I think it was her decision. I think it was a fair decision. I think the way it was gone about was maybe. Uh, less fair, I think there could have been. How, how do um, you mean? I mean, as in it was, it was quite um, the, the process that was gone through. Maybe wasn't as transparent as it could have been, yeah. um, and that could be improved. But I think you know, she she could have done with a lot more backing, particularly mm. from the male sabbatical officers, um, who you know. I just I think it's really important to support um, women who are in power, um, and I think um, she got a lot of heat for it that she didn't deserve, and that. Um, I think the rugby club since then has really transformed themselves and have worked really well. I know there's still some rumours on campus about stuff, but I know I've met with um, several mm. members of the rugby club and they've been really incredibly keen on both getting involved mm. in the AU um, ally programme and yeah. um, in terms of working on um, uh, mental health stigma in, in their clubs. You know, you see all sorts of language bandied about, and they've mm. been really keen on working on ableist language. Um, so I, no, I, I do, I do support Nona's decision um, and Nona. Um, um, and I think I, I do think they've done good work. I think in terms of restrictions that have been placed on them, I think you know hopefully we can move towards a place where they don't need those restrictions yeah. anymore, and um, and also they can help lead in terms of uh, just generally making sports really accessible to all the mm. liberation groups. Um, I think that would be really really valuable. I mean, women's rugby have done excellent work this year, yeah. so hopefully they can work more with them. Yeah. Do you think um, so you've obviously placed a lot of emphasis on liberation, yeah. specific liberation yeah. groups, as have other candidates? Mm. Um, a lot of the issues kind of discussed though are things that affect the whole school. Yeah, um, you know, Particularly mental health earlier, you said mm -hmm. about specific peer mentors for liberation groups. Yeah. When actually everyone, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people would argue that mental health as a whole is a liberation issue and people who suffer mental health issues themselves. Yeah. Um, so, do you think there's a danger by over focusing on specific groups? Actually, A, you can miss the broader picture, and actually, on a subconscious level, you can divide people. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. Mm. It was something that um, I was having discussions with a couple of friends with when writing my manifesto. Yeah. And, um, and so liberation is just a quarter section of my manifesto okay. because I really want to make it clear that as a community and welfare officer, I'm here mm. for everyone. And that mental health um, conditions definitely do fall under yeah. disabilities. Um, some people aren't comfortable defining like that, and that's yeah. fine. I'm not going to force anyone yeah, to define yeah. however they want. Um, but you definitely can reach out for that kind of support. Mm. But mental well-being is something that we all have. Yeah. Um, and I think the well-being project this year has been incredible in like getting together everyone you know I've helped Aisha um, work on that and getting everyone together and, and focusing on that so I think that there is I you know I think you're yeah. definitely right we do need to emphasize that all students can do that. I mean, one of my manifesto points, sorry to go back to that, <laughs> but is, um, is on getting the sports club involved in general well-being yeah. because they can, you know, we have so many incredible sports clubs that are winning stuff mm. all the time. Um, and like the rug the women's rugby clubs um, yeah. today went out and did um, training with uh, young girls mm. to get them involved in rugby, which was amazing. Yeah. And I think we need to celebrate that and get, get them do fun sessions for other students in school and think about well-being, not just, I mean, you know, physical well-being can be yeah. so important for mental well-being as well. So I think, yeah, it is, it is about making it as inclusive as possible for all of Everyone. our students. Yeah. And last question, um, obviously I've just been very active this year, mm. um, what do you think she's done well this year, what would have you done differently and what, what, which, which of her projects do you want to take forward and, and kind of carry mm. on into the future? Um, I think she's done amazingly this year, um, I've worked with her on quite a lot of things mm. and she's been really, really excellent and really on top of things. Um, 
in particular, I mean, I, the Wellbeing Project has been great. Mm. Um, I think Black Hair Story Month was incredible. Yeah. That was a really, really great project. She worked on that with Jasmina quite a lot. Um, that was excellent. Oh, what do I think she's not done well? That's really tricky. Um, I think perhaps I would, maybe I would have done this differently. I mean, I don't think it's a criticism of her necessarily, yeah. but I would have, I think I would focus a lot more on cost of living. Um, yeah. I think that's something that affects I, I just totally just want to focus on other things because mm. you know that's been a big thing for Nona this year. Um, but I, I would focus a lot more on holes rents. It's a, it's a huge issue for students, both in terms of their well-being mm. um, and and just in terms of being a barrier to a student at LSE. So I, I would have focused more on that. Um, things I will carry forward will be definitely the well-being project and expanding that and involving active lifestyle a lot mm. more in our sports clubs as well. Um, and uh, a Black Hair Story Month. I mean, as a white woman, it's very much my job to facilitate that. Mm. Um, but I would definitely provide the resources. Um, for uh, groups such as ISOC and IFEMSOC and um, uh, ACS to, to really like triumph that because I thought that was that was really excellent this year. Great, that was brilliant. Okay. Thanks so great. much. No, that's okay.